You know, when I went to India a number of years ago, and the Holy Spirit turned up, and you've heard the visitation so many times, but two things happened in my life, and that God gave me one, a revelation of the person of the Holy Spirit, and number two, he gave me this huge download of faith. I was uh, flying back uh, to New Zealand. I had this book in my hands by Smith Wigglesworth called Ever Increasing Faith. And God just gripped my spirit in an unusual way, probably for seven or eight hours, as there was a deposit of faith uh, put into my spirit. And really, I operate and I function from that. You know, today, all through my ministry, I think a lot of what God's managed to do in this church is because of a download of faith that came into my heart. Because faith is probably the most important thing that you need in your life to see God do the things that he wants to do. It's interesting, isn't it? When God listed his champions in Hebrews chapter 11, he didn't focus on their love. He didn't focus on their character. He didn't focus on their prayer life. He didn't focus on their closeness to God. None of that. He focused on one thing, their faith. Because you actually need the faith for any of those other things to happen anyway. You know, to, to love God more, to pray, etc. You need faith. And so there's a great scripture that you want to grab a hold of in uh, Matthew 9:29. According to your faith, be it done to you. That is an astronomical statement. It is massive. It is humongous. It is huge. It is beyond comprehension because what God is saying you to, to you tonight is that whatever you want to do, God to do it to, in your life, it all depends on your faith. Yeah. According to your faith, not according to your prayers, not according to your loving people, not according to anything else, according to your faith. If there's one thing you need more than anything else, it is an increase of faith. Is there a shout? Is there a praise? Is there a cry in the house tonight? The reason you don't have what you want is because of a lack of faith. That's pretty much the answer. The reason I don't have what I want is because of a lack of faith. Because the Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. See, faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. If you want to go shopping in New Zealand, you need New Zealand dollars, right? If you want to go shopping in India, you need rupees. If you want to go shopping in Egypt, you need pounds. To shop in God's shopping mall, which is the biggest mall in the world. That sells everything. It's never out of stock. There's no waiting line. There's no queues. There's no return, to, return for faulty goods. There's none of that there. It is, but to shop in God's shopping mall, you actually don't need money. You just need faith. The currency is faith. So that means to me that the poorest person on planet Earth who probably even sleeps on the, on the streets, what they can actually shop in the God shopping mall and get more than the wealthiest people in the world because they have faith. Yeah. The poorest can be the richest in the kingdom of God if they have faith in their hearts. They don't have to have a big bank account. They just need big faith in their hearts and they can access heaven and see the miracle power of God. So it's not about the money in your bank account. It's the faith that's in your heart that makes all the difference. And that's what we're preaching about tonight. So the Bible says faith comes by hearing. You're hearing about faith tonight. Thank you for coming out. And that means by the end of the service, you will have more faith than you came in with. Your faith may be here, but let it go up a notch and then another notch and then another. Let it just keep going up because as your faith increases, you're gonna see God do more and more things in your life. But the truth is, faith will cause you to accomplish way beyond others around you. It just takes you to another level. You don't have to be the most academic, the most charismatic. You don't have to be a leader. You don't have to be intelligent in order to see God do amazing things in your life. It's not a matter of charisma. It's not a matter of leadership. It's not a matter of, of any, any of these other things. It is a matter of faith, according to my Bible. That's why Peter and John, Bible says, were ignorant and unlearned men. And what did they do? They met with God. They had faith. They worked signs and wonders and miracles, and they turned the world upside down. You are called to be like Peter and John. You may be unlearned. As I look around, there's probably some here tonight. You may be ignorant. There may be a few of those here tonight as well. But it doesn't matter. 
It does not matter. What you need is faith in your heart, like Peter and John, and you can see God do incredible things in your life. We're always looking for some other key, some other strategy, but God says, no, what you need is more faith in your life. It was Smith Wigglesworth who said this. He said, I have learned by personal experience, I can get more out of a moment of faith than I can get out of a month's yelling. I'm actually pretty good at the yelling. But it's not the yelling that counts. It's the faith. It's not how much you pray. Pray a lot, please. But it's how much faith you pray with. It's how much faith you pray with. And we gotta stop being satisfied with their unanswered prayers. We gotta start believing that as we pray, God is gonna answer. We gotta put faith to our prayers. That's why I say the missing element for a lot of us, we pray plenty, but we don't see enough because there's not enough faith in our praying. Every time you're praying, you need to be exercising faith at the same time. You need to be believing God at the same time. You need to be crying out to God for that faith element in your heart so that the answer comes through. One of the biggest hindrances to breakthrough is unbelief. I reckon it's a stronghold in the body of Christ. Massive stronghold, holding people back from seeing what God wants them to do. Watch this, Matthew 13, 58. He, that's Jesus, did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Think about that. God himself, Jesus, could not do many miracles because of unbelief in their hearts. Unbelief in our hearts can stop God doing what he wants to do. And so we gotta somehow eradicate unbelief. I think it was Smith Wigglesworth who said, too much roast beef and unbelief. And so what happens is unbelief fills our hearts. We don't know, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to increase your faith in just a moment, but all this unbelief keeps filling our hearts. And friends, I'm telling you tonight that everything in the world, every Thing in the media, everything on social media, on the TV, the news, everywhere you look, it is feeding unbelief into your heart all the time. It is feeding, you can't trust God, you can't believe God, it's bad, it's gonna get worse, you're not gonna make it. It's feeding you all the time, all the time, unbelief. And that's why it's a stronghold. And we don't know it's happening. It's just fed into us all the time. I think it was Wigglesworth refused to even watch read the news because it was all negative. And he didn't want any unbelief getting inside his heart. So he didn't even, he didn't, all he basically did was read this book. No wonder he had incredible faith. So just take a note of this, friends, that every so all the time, the devil is feeding unbelief into your heart. Therefore, when we pray, we don't get the answers. Unbelief is a massive stronghold. But we read in Matthew 17, verse 20, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, it's all you need. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And watch this, and nothing, say this with me, and nothing will be impossible for you. Do you think that's God speaking to you? I mean, are you included in the you? Yeah. Nothing will be impossible to you? Yeah. The problem, we read that verse, we hear that, but we don't believe it. Yeah. We just don't believe it. He says, if we have the faith, nothing will be impossible to you. You and all you need is a mustard seed, which is one of the smallest mustard seeds possible. It is just a tiny, tiny mustard seed. And that's it, God says, that's all the faith that you need. So friends, it is time to stop talking about your mountain. Stop talking about your giant. Stop talking about your problems. It's time to speak to your mountain. It's time to speak to your giant. It's time to speak to the problems that are facing you today. Stop talking about the giants and the mountains. Start speaking to them because but this, it says here, if you speak to your mountain, then it's gonna move in Jesus' name. You know, a lot of people say, no way. You got a problem on your hands? You say, no way. God says, Yahweh. Yahweh means I am enough. I am more than your problem. I'm greater than your giant. <clears throat> stop saying no way. Whatever you're facing today, stop saying no way and start saying Yahweh, my God is able. My God is greater. He is the great I am. Nothing is too hard for my God. 
It's not no way, it's Yahweh. It's not no way, it's Yahweh. I am that I am. I can do all that, I, that you want me to do. Nothing will be impossible for you. Stop saying no way. Come on, shout it with me. Yahweh. Why don't we stand together, please? I want us to say together, it's not no way, it's Yahweh. It's not no way, it's Yahweh. Three times together, it's not no way, it's Yahweh. Are you up for this? Come on, you ready for this? Three times and a drum roll and a clap and a shout, and then if you're loud enough, I'll let you sit down. All right, all right, you ready? Three times, it's not no way, it's Yahweh. Three, two, one, go. It's not no way, it's Yahweh. It's not no way, it's Yahweh. It's not no way, it's Yahweh. Awesome. Two things that faith will do for you. Watch this. Confidence in the face of a great challenge. Confidence in God when you're facing a great challenge. That's what faith will do for you. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You know the problem with that verse? We don't believe it. We actually don't believe it. We think, oh, no, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. That's our problem. It's unbelief. Here's another verse. Romans 8.37, yet in all these things, all, you can look that up in any language, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. A problem, we don't believe it. God says it, but we don't believe it. We say no way. <laughs> he says Yahweh. Yeah. Are you getting it? Yeah. See how big unbelief is? Yes. It's just massive. That's why we don't see quite the miracles, though some good things are starting to happen. <clears throat> you know, when this building, we're up in the auditorium too, had to put this building up back 30 odd years ago, or however, 20 odd years ago, I think it was about five or six million dollars, which was huge in those days. But we exercised faith and we prayed and we said, God, no mortgage, please. No mortgage, please. No mortgage, please. And every time a bill came in, the money came in at the same time. We got in here debt free, no mortgage in Jesus' name. Why don't you start believing that for your own life? Just a thought. Pray for it, pray into it, believe for it. In fact, when we needed to put all those car parks down there, the grass area, <coughs> went to the neighbors, six neighbors, we needed their approval. All six said, except one, I think it was six, all six, all six except one said, no way. <laughs> and those days I didn't know about Yahweh, but <laughs> I was saying Yahweh. But we, we believed God. Yeah. We prayed, and it wasn't that long before all six signed up and said, hey, you can build the car parks. Faith, you see, friends, yeah. faith has built this place. Faith has done what God has been able to do here in this place. So when facing Goliath, David was full of faith, all right, and uh, that God would help him defeat the giant. So he said this in 1 Samuel 17, 45, 46, David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This is his faith. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. You need to say, this day, the Lord's gonna deliver you from your giant into my hand, and I'll strike you, and I'll take your head from you. Friends, this is how you speak to the Goliath. You speak with boldness, you speak with faith, you speak with confidence, you speak with the assurance that this day, the enemy will be defeated. Watch this. If God puts a Goliath in front of you, he must believe there's a David inside of you that can take down the Goliath that's in front of you. I wanna to declare tonight in Jesus' name, there is a David inside of you and that David is gonna take down the Goliath that is in front of you. You say no way, I say Yahweh. There is a David inside of you. Is there a praise in the house? Come on. There's a David inside of you. There's a giant killer inside of you. You know what our problem is? We don't believe it. We just don't believe it. You think now that giant's too big? Can't be done? It can be done. Come on, I'm building faith. Yeah. Well, I'm trying my best to build faith tonight. Yeah. Number two, faith will help you keep a right attitude in a trial or an injustice. This is big, folks. So there's no bitterness, no unforgiveness, no grudges, no resentment, nothing. Because life is 10% what happens to you 
and 90% how you respond. Two sons of an alcoholic father, one ends up a clean-cut living good man, the other a hopeless drunk like his father. They said, ask them the same question. How did you turn out? How come you turned out the way you did? They both gave exactly the same answer. What would you expect with a father like mine? One responded, made a success of his life. One reacted and wrecked his life. Faith will help you respond. You know, one of the biggest things that I could ever teach you or train you, I believe in life, is no matter what is going on, keep your heart right. And what is keep going on, keep sweet before God. Don't let any angst get in. Don't, not an ounce of angst, friend. Not an ounce of angst. Don't let it get in, because that'll take you down the wrong road. It'll take you to a pathway that just gets worse and worse and worse. So just keep your heart right at all times, and God will help you through. There's two verses that we must all believe on life's journey. Two verses. Here they are. Romans 8, 28. We've got to believe those. All things work together for good. For them that love God, those who are called according to His purpose. Our problem we don't believe in all things. God works it all together for good. Now, some of us do believe it, but even for myself, we've got to believe it more and more and more. The other one you've got to believe is Genesis 50, 20. You meant evil for me, against me, but God meant it for good. Got to believe whatever evil comes our way, God can work it for good. No matter what happens in your life, God can work it for good. Whatever's happening to you right now, God can work it for good. Keep your heart right, keep sweet before the Lord, and God can work it for good. <coughs> Those two verses are absolutely foundational to our faith. We've just got to believe those verses and grow in those verses all the time. You know, Job lost everything. He lost his health, his wealth, his family, but he kept his heart right. And he ended up with twice as much as he had before. And he had a lot at the beginning, but he gets twice as much. Keep your heart right. Stay close to God. Exercise faith. Believe God twice as much. Twice the blessing. Twice the blessing for what the enemy has thrown at you. Believe God for twice the blessing. All right, as I wrap this up, seven ways to increase your faith. These are very, very simple but very, very powerful. I'll drink to it. <laughs> Number one, you might want to jot these down somewhere, folks, because it's an absolute key. Number one is develop your relationship with God. Just got to keep doing that, folks. Because my Bible says, Daniel eleven thirty two, 32, the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out Great exploits. The single greatest key to real faith is develop your relationship with God. You can't be a low-key, casual, compromised Christian who turns up to church every so often and expect your faith to grow, expect your relationship to, with God to grow. It's, not, it's just not gonna happen, folks. We've gotta be fully engaged and fully committed to pursuing God with all of our hearts. And as you do, friends, your faith will grow. And as your faith grows, you'll do exploits for God. You'll see God do amazing things. <laughs> I tend to think faith is a little bit like cheating. Because you manage to do things that others can't do. Yeah. They look at you and think, man, how come you get this, this, and this? Because you've trapped into this faith factor in your life. It makes all the difference, folks. Number two. Number two is the Word of God. For Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Be much in this book. Thank you for that overwhelming response. I'll try this side here. Be much in this book. Be much in this book. Be much in this book. Let me give you some facts. They say 85% of Christians, 85% do not read their Bible Monday through Saturday. 85% do not read, the, they do not open this book. Any wonder why they're defeated? Any wonder why they're beaten? Any wonder why they can't overcome their obstacles? You don't open this book, friends. Your level of faith is gonna be right down here, very, very low. Be much in this book. Be much in the Bible. Tell the person next to you, get into your Bible more and more. Go and tell them, yell it at them, scream it at them. <clears throat> 
We have Bibles in every way, shape, form. It's on your computer, it's on your iPad, it's on your, on, on your phone, it's, it's everywhere and all over the place, and yet we read it less than we've ever read it before. Be, if you wanna be a person of faith, get into the book, get into the Bible, read it, devour it, explore it. When I had my visitations of God, the biggest thing he said to me, he said, Tark, get into the book, read the book, devour your book, explore the book, receive the book, and as you do, your faith will grow more and more. Read it, get it in, get it out. Your faith will grow and you'll see the impossible. That's what God spoke to me 30 odd years ago. Get into the book. Get into the book, folks. If you want faith, if you wanna see answers and breakthroughs. Number three. Three verses to pray regularly. Luke 70 and five, Lord increase our faith, or Lord increase my faith. You pray that, your faith will increase, full stop. Simple, it's three words. Four, Lord increase my faith, or increase my faith, three words actually. Increase, how long did that take you? Three seconds? Increase my faith. Three seconds a day, and your faith will explode. Three seconds a day. Is that asking too much? Maybe it is. I'm sure it's not. Mark 11, 24, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you'll receive and it shall be yours. Yes. Mark 9, 24, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Three verses to pray on a very, very regular basis. Let's go. Number four, I've got seven, all right? Three to go, four to go. Number four, walk with faith people. Hang around people of faith. I struggle Sorry to say this, with negative people. People that give you five reasons why it may not work. Give me a break. (laughs) Don't don't be, don't hang around negative people, friends. It will affect your spirit. You know, sometimes Jesus puts, when he goes to pray for someone, he puts, was it Jesus or Peter? I want him, Peter. Was it Peter? Jesus. Put, put them out of the room and he just took, yeah, I think it was Jesus, and just took a few of the ones full of faith and raised the girl from the dead. But he, he wouldn't let a whole lot of people in the room because they had unbelief, they didn't have faith. You don't wanna be around negative people. And so tell a person next to you, please stop being negative or please don't be negative. Please don't be negative. Please don't be negative. <laughs> You know, when you're with a group of people, seriously, and you get negative, you're like a wet blanket. Don't do it, all right? Walk with faith, people. Number five, read faith. The miracles of Jesus. Find books on faith. Smith Wigglesworth, John G. Lake, they're, all, they're out there, stack them, go online. You can find books on faith. Start reading faith and your faith is gonna grow more and more and more. All right, we're up to number six. Watch faith. Hmm, don't watch junk. Don't watch junk. Because junk increases unbelief. You know, sometimes we watch stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it feeds unbelief. And we don't, we've got to be careful what we watch because it just increases the unbelief in our hearts. And so we need to watch Christian DVDs. There's plenty of them out there. Go online, you can watch that stuff. You need to watch Christian television. And you need to watch Running With Fire. Anyone who's not watched Running With Fire in the last year, I want you to come to this altar now. (laughs) And we wanna pray for you. What about watching my daily devos on Facebook? They're on Monday through Friday. They're just there, they'll feed your faith. They're mostly about five minutes long, that's all it takes. So I'm expecting a big jump in the number of people watching that tomorrow, okay? The last one is this, number seven is talk faith. Just talk faith all the time, just talk. Yeah, I believe we can do it, it's gonna happen. I talk faith all the time. So Mark eleven twenty three. whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. The word says is repeated three times. You have to open your mouth and speak. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed. So it's your words have power. If they're positive words, they release miracles. If they're negative words, 
They work against you and they don't produce what you are after. So, what challenge are you facing tonight as the team would come? Faith is the trigger that will release divine power to work for you. May today be the day that you get your miracle and your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen.